So if you wanted to find the derivative of x plus 2 cubed, this is going to be the way that we recognize that something is a chain rule is when there is one function inside of another function. So I don't know if you remember, you probably liked this notation for a function inside of a function. And have you seen this notation before, right? And you don't like it as much. So every time you see the foggy notation, you change it to this notation. And I would agree with fog because I feel like that one's a little unclear. But the other one is easier to understand. Okay? So in this case, can you see that there is an x plus 2, which is a line, inside of an x cubed function? Technically, what we have here is we have one function, which is the x cubed function, and another function, which is the line function. And if we put g of x inside of f of x, using our skills in function notation, f of g of x would be f of x plus 2. And the way that functions work, whatever you plug in for x replaces the x. So if I have f of x plus 2, that means x plus 2 cubed. Now, our only skill that we can do right now for this would be to multiply it all out, then do the derivative using our regular derivative rules, and see what we get. Okay, I don't want you to write this down, but I've got it, I believe I have it pre-done for you, right? There's multiplying it all out. You would get x cubed plus 6x squared plus 12x plus 8. Then the derivative, bring the number in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, and when you factor it, you get 3x plus 2 squared. And you're like, this is awesome. I see a shortcut. I just ignore the inside and do the power rule. Because it works, right? Because the 3 came out in front, x plus 2 squared. You can write down, if you want, the only thing you should write down is the answer, and you feel all like, oh, this is good. So you say, maybe that always works. And then you get disappointed. Because it doesn't. It's like, oh, what's our next example? Our next example says, what would happen if we looked at a bunch of them? and did that every single time, expanded it completely, really annoying with this 1 to the power of 40, by the way, and then used your skills and factored it. And you're like, ooh, it almost works out perfectly that we can ignore the inside. But sometimes there's a little extra built on. So we analyze that, and you'll see what's happening. It almost looks perfect, like, oh, the 5 comes out in front, I subtract 1 from the exponent. 40 came out in front, I subtract 1 from the exponent. The 7 came out in front, I subtracted 1 from the exponent. But then there's a little extra left over. Where does the extra left over come in? And does your pattern also explain why in the first one that the derivative didn't have anything extra left over. What pattern do we notice? Okay. So this too is yeah, the derivative of the inside. This 6x is the derivative of the inside. This 4x cubed minus 1, it's bigger, but it had more stuff on the inside. That would be the complete derivative of the inside. 
So again, we're going to find that we can understand how to do these derivative rules the easiest if we can sort of explain them in words. So with the chain rule, you're going to hear me talking about the inside function. And because I have an inside function, I'm going to refer to the other one as the outside function, just to be able to tell the difference. So in our first example, the function g of x, which is x plus 2, happens to be inside of f of x. So I have an outside function and I have an inside function. And the chain rule says you do the derivative of the outside function, right? What's the derivative of an x cubed? Well, that would bring the 3 out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. In each of these, they've done the derivative of the outside function. The 5 came out in front, and you subtracted 1 from the exponent, and you kept the inside function the same. Then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So when you hear me talk about the chain rule, I'll say it exactly like that. Do the derivative of the outside function, keep the inside function the same. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And we see it really nicely with the power rule here. Okay? But we have to keep that as our mindset all the way through. Okay? We can change where our inside functions are and where our outside functions are. Okay, what would be some, let's put, what would you like to put inside of, let's do some weird ones. Let's put sine of x inside of, pick another one that you know. You want sine of x inside of tan, you want sine of x inside natural log, which one do you want to see? Do inside the natural. So if your function looked like this, first of all, you have to recognize the composition of functions. That a function has taken the place of x in another function. In this one, the sine of x is in the place where the x is normally in the natural log. So we would say that sine of x is inside of the natural log of x. So how do we do the derivative with the chain rule? We do the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is the natural log. The derivative of natural log is 1 over what's in its inside. So this derivative would be 1 over keep the inside the same, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, it's cotangent. The derivative of the natural log of sine of x, yeah, it's exciting like one um, The derivative of the natural log of sine of x, the pre perfectly works out to be cotangent. I didn't even know that was going to happen. We just picked two random ones and did some... Wow. So what happened? We did the derivative of the outside function, which normally would be 1 over x, but we keep the inside the same. So where the x was is now sine of x, so it becomes 1 over sine of x. Multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is cos. That's the chain rule, okay? With a formula, you actually probably will not want to use the formula on your formula sheet. We will somehow use the formula a little bit later on when we work backwards, but using the formula as it's stated will actually, I think, in my opinion, cause you more grief than is necessary. 
going to be much easier for you to say, take the derivative of the outside function, keep the inside the same, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay? What have they done? They said, if y is a function of u, and u is a function of x, in other words, we have that f of x is inside g of x, then the derivative with respect to x is the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. Again, I don't think this formula is going to be very helpful or useful to you. I can show you how it's, there we go. We can, we can go to some So first of all, the way that I want you to be able to do this one is to notice that the 3x plus 6 is inside of the power of 5. So the power of 5 would be your outside function. You do that first, keep the inside the same, then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. But if you wanted to do it the complicated way, not recommended, then this is how you would have to set it up. You have to recognize your outside function is the power of 5. So you would write y is equal to, introduce the letter u, and say u to the 5. And u is equal to 3x plus 6. So then dy dx, there we go, u would equal 3x plus 6. Then du dx is 3. dy du is 5u to the 4, and dy dx would be dy du times du dx, so you would write 5u to the 4 times 3, and then substitute back and get your answer. My recommendation is that you just do this immediately. Much easier. You can either choose to write all of this, or just write what's in the green box and be done. How do you write what's in the green box? Well, recognize the outside function is the 5. 5 comes out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, keep the inside the same, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Right? That's nice. That's my opinion on doing it the long way. Much easier to just do it directly. So I'm not going to do any more sucky method ones. I would just keep that idea. If I want to find my derivative. Derivative of the outside function means bring the 5 in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, keep the inside the same, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Perfectly easy. And when we get into ones that are more complicated, the formula gets more confusing and doesn't work so well. But if you keep your words of what needs to be done the same, the more complicated ones can work. Because we can have a function inside of a function inside of a function. What would happen if you did the natural log of sine of tan? Oh. But it can be done. We'll get there. I, I know I want to go there already. No, okay. I know. Small steps at a time. So, your skill is recognizing what's inside of what. Some things are really easy to see something inside of something else. This one, powers are really easy. It's easy for me to see the 5x cubed plus 2 is inside of a power of 6. So I can tell right away, I'll underline them now in yellow, my inside function is that. My outside function is the power of 6, so dy dx. 6 would come out in front, give you 24, keep the inside the same, subtract 1 from the exponent, then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. I'll underline that. Dot it in yellow.
yellow to show that that's my derivative of my inside function. Interestingly, keeping something the same will test your patience. Number one mistakes that I have with students doing these derivatives is they get so excited about doing, they just derivative right away. And they can't keep something the same and be patient before they do something. So the keeping something the, the same is going to be a little bit difficult at times. Okay. Hmm. I just want to keep doing more and more and more. Options. Can you see you're dividing? So we could do this as a quotient rule because we're dividing. Could you avoid the quotient rule? Yes. You could avoid the quotient rule by using a negative exponent law. So you have options here. Both would be right. You could either choose quotient rule or choose to get rid of the dividing. If you chose to get rid of the dividing, this would be the first step. Does this change this into a product rule? No. Because technically, technically, would you agree there's multiplication there? But it's only going to be a product rule if that multiplication separates two functions with x. But we just have a like a coefficient of 3 there. So it doesn't have to be a product rule. But if it was a 3x, then it would be another situation. So if I do, oh, sorry, you saw it. I'm sure you all saw I forgot the little negative there. When I bring that 4 up to the top, that would be a negative exponent rule. Everybody saw that. Everybody had it in, in their notes before I did. I'm glad you all. So, in this situation, what? Look how well, Sorry. Oh, I interrupted. Is really important? It, oh, we're having so much fun. I can pause this. I'm, you don't have to. Oh, I will. Hi, everybody. So, recognizing the x squared plus x is inside a function. We could do this derivative by saying derivative of the outside function. Hopefully you are still amazing at subtracting by 1. Kind of lost that skill over the holidays. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Done. If you did this as the quotient rule, and you had left it like this, the quotient rule says, keep the bottom the same. Multiply by the derivative of the top. What is the derivative of 3? 0. Subtract. Now keep the top the same. And the derivative of the bottom is a chain rule. So how do we do the chain rule? It has x squared plus x inside. So the 4 would come out in front x squared plus x, I should have written more space, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. All over the bottom square. Squaring the power of 4 would make a power of 8. The question is, can you see that these are the same? First of all, this 0 would go away. Looking at your x squared plus x, do you see that I have an x squared plus x to the 8 on the bottom here, and an x squared plus x to the 3 on the top? They would cancel out, leaving me an x squared plus x to the 5 on the bottom. In the first one, I have an x squared plus x to the negative 5, which would be the same as an x squared plus x to the 5 on the bottom. This one would have a 2x plus 1 on top, this one would have a 2x plus 1 on top. This one has a negative 12 on the top. This one has a negative 3 times 4. Hmm. I guess not. <laughs> Which is negative 4. 
So both of these would be correct. This looks messier, not only because it is, but because it is. Right. Good. So you can choose. If, if you see the quotient rule first, it's not wrong. If you decide, hey, I think the chain rule would be easier if I change the exponent first, perfect. You have those options. Oh. Sorry, they just all look so exciting. What are we going to have to do first? Well, first of all, we're going to have to take the time to change the fifth root to the power of one fifth. Do you see that this is inside that fifth root? That's your inside function. And so we will need to bring the one fifth out in front, keep the inside the same. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. And you can see where we're going to start to go. We're going to start to mix, as we did in the last one, we had the quotient rule and the chain rule. We can have chain rule and product rule. We can have chain rules twice with product rules. We could have double chain rules with quotient rules. But you can just keep you can just keep piling them on top of each other and just as long as you can work yourself through the words of what needs to be done and keep track of where you are, you can make them more and more complicated, but the rules stay the same, which I find beautiful about calculus, but you have to organize sometimes a lot of data. Yeah. So we did this already. We've done this long. When the outside and inside functions get confusing to look at. Which is inside and which is outside? Is the square inside sine or is the sine inside square? And I find on these ones, I actually right, might change back to this notation. Because you might be tempted to say the squared is inside sine, when in reality, the sine of x is inside the square. So how would we do this? The derivative, outside function, keep the inside the same, subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which, do you recognize the identity? That's so cool. You could convince someone, oh yeah, when you do the derivative of that 2, that 2 just comes down. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do it that way. That's not the rule, but it works. You can make up your own rules to confuse people in university. Don't do that. Can't do that. That's crazy. Oh. I know that I had excitement on my face all class, but this one had like a little bit added excitement. Because if first of all, if I just change this so that it's more like normal, can you see that there's a cos of 5x inside of square? But also, we have a 5x inside of cos. If you tried to do this with the formula weights, I've only showed you the formula once because 
I know that if you don't throw smooth things like this into times you'll forget it. So showing you more than once, hopefully you've already forgotten that completely. That was the plan. This one is just does not work nice with the formula because we have a chain rule inside of a chain rule in this function. We have an outside function. The most outside function is the square. But then the inside function has its own inside function outside. So how do we do the chain rule? The chain rule says, do the derivative of the outside function, which is the square, keep the inside the same. No problem, subtract one from the exponent. Multiply by. Then we have to do the derivative of the inside function, which the inside function here is another chain rule. So how do we do the derivative of that? We have to say, in this chain rule, now the 5x is inside of cos. So cos would be its outside function, and the 5x, its inside function. The derivative of the outside function, what's the derivative of cos? Negative sine, keep the inside function the same, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just going to be 5. Again, if you can talk through it in words, you'll remember what you need to do. We did the derivative of the outside function. Oh, I wanted to use blue. Here's my outside function. Here's its derivative. We kept the inside function the same. Then the derivative of the inside function has its own inside function, which I underlined in green. So we did the derivative of the outside function. It's right here. Kept the inside the same and then did the derivative of its inside function. Okay. Let's do another function inside of a function inside of a function. Again, using ones that it's really easy to see them change. Okay. So I'm just going to I'm just going to add another one. Okay. Tan of Tan of sine of 8x to the 7 minus 15x cubed. Very typical example. I chose this because I think it's really easy to see what's inside of what. The most outside function is 10. And then the sine of 8x to the 7 minus 15x cubed is inside of it. But on the inside of that, the 8x7 minus 15x cubed is inside of sine. So it's going to be a double chain. When doing its derivative, we do the derivative of the outside function first, keep the inside the same. So the outside function is tan. What's the derivative of tan of x? Secant squared of x. So the derivative of this would start off with secant squared keep the inside the same. Step one, done. Then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So when you've done the derivative of the outside and kept the inside the same, now you just need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So I just think about the inside part. The inside part is another chain. Its outside function is sine. What's the derivative of sine? Cos. Keep its inside the same. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Oh my goodness, I tried desperately. 
to save enough room to do it, and I ran out. Very complicated looking answer. But each step is each step simple in its own, right? So it's complicated because you need to know each of the derivatives. Then you need to manage your data of what's inside, what's outside as you're going along. But not since, I would say, really not since grade nine, can you answer questions in one step? Like grade nine, you'd have like, x plus 3 equals 4, and then you would write x equals 1. And it really good. And you'd just be able to answer in one step. We're answering in one step again, which technically puts it on a really easy level. But you have to remember lots of things as you're going. And even though it gets abstract, right, they're not they're not easy in that where you go, like, grade nine, you look at the answer and you go, yes. Calculus, you can't just look at the answer and like, oh yeah, definitely, I'm like, are you see, it doesn't, it doesn't do that same thing. That great, but it's like grade nine in that you can do it in just one step, which is crazy. But just oh, what's inside, what's outside, what's the inside function? So Again, I think you have two equations that you see here. You see an e to the power, so you have an e to the x function, and you have a 2x squared. And you have to try and figure out which one's replacing the x in the other one. So I hope that you can see here that your outside function is e to the x, and your inside is the 2x squared. That 2x squared has, right? Where the x was originally in e to the x, it's been replaced now with the 2x squared. So that replacement has put the 2x squared inside of the e to the x. But the problem with an exponent, it'd almost be easier if you had to write exponents always in brackets. Because then you'd be like, oh, I can see it's inside where the brackets are. Because we get used to seeing the inside function in brackets sort of huddled all by itself, and it's like, oh, it's really easy and obvious to recognize it because it's inside brackets. But with an exponent, you don't need it inside brackets, which makes it a little bit more complicated to see. So when finding our derivative, we have to do the derivative of the outside function first. That's the derivative of e to the x. It doesn't change. So we start. By doing the derivative and keeping the inside the same, I kept it in brackets, I wouldn't need to. Then you'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function to be 4x. Sine of x is inside. So I do the derivative of the outside function, which is just e, just stays the same. Keep the inside the same. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is cosine. So much fun. Many more examples are there? There's 9, there's 10, 11. And we're basically done the unit, we just have to reuse it.
um, could use the quotient rule. No matter which rule you use, you're going to have to do something with that square root, right? We're going to have to change that square root to a half. Ask yourself, which do you think will be easier to work with? This? Or that? Both have the chain rule. The one on the left has chain rule and quotient rule. The one on the right just has chain rule. So I would tend to use this one. Outside functions of speak the inside of the thing. Multiply by the derivative of the other way. Okay. One step to your answer. Again, what are things that can hold you back is if your other derivative rules that you've learned so far, you don't have them memorized. Like if you don't know the derivative of sine is cos, then you have to look it up in your formula sheet. And while you're looking it up in your formula sheet to find out, oh, the derivative of sine is cos, you come back to your page and you're like, where was I in my chain rule words? Right? Because the chain rule is derivative of the outside function multiplied by the inside function times by the derivative of the inside function. Oh yeah. Then you look, which one was my outside function? It's sine. And by then you've forgotten, because you just looked at your formula sheet, you've now forgotten that the derivative of sine was cos. So you go back to your formula sheet and go look at them again. Derivative of sine is cos. And then you come back to your page and you're like, oh, it's a chain rule. Where was I in my chain rule? Chain rule says, Okay, derivative of the outside function, keep the inside the same, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. What's my outside function? Sine. Crap, I forgot what the derivative of sine was. And you're going back, and, and this is where calculus becomes really hard, is if you don't know your rules well, you're going to spin. You're going to, and then you'll be like, did I do my derivative of my inside? Did I keep one? This, where am I? And then you're lost. And then the derivatives, they do not come out nice. They just, it's just a mess. Like you, I can see, holy smoke, they are lost. And they're like, I, I better, oh, I just got, and I like, I, here's the derivative of the inside function. Oh, I've got another function. I'll do the derivative. And they just like, just keep writing. And you, you have to have a sense of where things are so that you can keep things together. But if any one part starts getting weak, that's when things start to fall apart. So we, you know, lots of practice. I've given you, I give you tons of stuff before the break. Uh, one thing I told my grade 10 class, and I was like, this is so true, even for you guys now in grade 12. With your derivatives, even though we don't have calculus tomorrow or Monday, just do 10 minutes a day. Every day. Ten minutes isn't a lot. You have ten minutes every day. You don't have to do more than that. You might find that once you get going, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm going to do some more. But take ten minutes every day to do some. And you will find that things get better and better and better. All right.